Welcome back to Physics in Montana 403. We're looking at a spring to do an experiment to find the spring constant using Hooke's Law for this particular spring. You can see as I move the camera around that where our point of view is really matters. But I'm going to declare that the bottom of this hook, which is suspended from the spring, is um, at the location 32 centimeters, 32.0 centimeters on our meter stick. Because that's what it looks when I like, like when I line my up perfectly. So first thing I'm going to do is hang a mass on it. This is a 10.0 kilogram mass measured just now with an electronic balance. And we're going to see if the bottom of the hook moved. Okay. And if I can make that stop wiggling around, all right, it looks like it moved slightly. So I'm going to say, what do you think that says now? It looks to me like it might be 32.3. And we're now going to add a second mass. So we're increasing the amount of force pulling on the spring. And we're looking at the bottom of the paperclip hook to determine where the spring has stretched. And it looks to me now that it's reading, what do you think, 33.2. And I'm going to add a third mass. This one is not exactly 10. This is 10.1 grams. So remember, we're in grams, not kilograms. You're going to have to do some conversion there. And we want to look again to see where that hook has gone. And it looks to me like it's about Let's call it 35.8. From this information, I want you to make a graph. So you're going to have to first turn that mass into force and then calculate a plot of force versus stretch. And you should get a line. And if you do, you know you have an ideal spring, which is obeying Hooke's law. And the slope of that line should tell you something important. So please calculate the spring constant, also sometimes called the force constant, for this spring.